Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Space Snacks. Today, I am here with my guest, Mike Prokosh. Hi, Mike. How's it Hi. going? Hi. I'm Mike, good. <laughs> Mike and I are both Astronomy in Chile Educator Ambassadors, and we'll get to that in just a moment. But, Mike, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Uh, well, the I always tell people that the job that I have that pays the bills, I'm a, I'm a special education teacher. I teach junior high students uh, between 6th, and 8th, 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. The, I'd say the students with the, the profound disabilities, um, that, that's what keeps the lights on and the cars running and uh, the, the girls, wife and kids happy with the uh, keeping gas in the car and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And in, in my, my, my side gig, uh, I run the same Houston state university's planetarium and their observatory. So when the, the college students that are, that are taking intro to astronomy to fulfill their, some of their science credit, uh, some of their lab work involves going out to the observatory, which really just amounts to getting some telescope time. Mm -hmm. So I kind of coordinate the schedule for that and make sure that everybody doesn't break anything <laughs> using it correctly. And in the planetarium, uh, I get to train the incoming lab instructors on the projector. And then I do uh, once a month, or if time permits, I could do more shows, uh, a, a public show um, on Friday evenings. In the summertime, I do a lot more stuff, but uh, in, in the, the regular, September to May time of year, it's uh, a lot less. And so you, you've you been doing that. You've been there for quite a while, uh, almost 20 years, right? Yes. I, I've been a, a public school teacher for, for 20 years, and I've been running the uh, doing stuff at St. Houston for uh, right at about 19. <clears throat> and so why space? Have you always um, been you know, a space enthusiast. I feel like we're kindred spirits because I'm a geoscience professor. I've been doing it for just over 20 years, but I also like, I love space. And so space is kind of like you, you have it where you actually get paid to do some stuff and with space. Um, I haven't figured that out yet. Uh, but as a kid, was space always part of your, you know, your life, what you wanted to do? It's it was always a part of the equation. I remember asking for a telescope very very young, and the first year I was asking for it, I got a globe and an atlas. I'm like, okay, it's kind of cool, but it's not a telescope. Then the second year, I think my grandparents did the thing that a lot of people do and get the mix up, and I got a microscope <laughs> instead of a telescope. And I still have that microscope. I use it, but I, I can imagine they were asking, why is he still asking for this? We just gave him one. Like, no, 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 it's not a telescope. He gave me the wrong thing. So I got a telescope the following year and not having other people around to show me how to use it, it was figured out for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I, like the idea of polar aligning it, I, I didn't learn that until I got into college. I mm -hmm. would just figured I was doing good dragging that wooden tripod out in the middle of the field at night looking for Halley's Comet, never did find it. Um, but every time the the book fair would come into the elementary school and, and the junior high, there was always, uh, you know, some astronomy books. And granted, the material that was in it, I already knew everything, but the pictures were always different. That's why I buy the books. And so I've always been interested. I liked going out, looking at, uh, l l looking for lunar eclipses. Uh, I discovered Saturn, so I don't believe it. Anybody else? I'm the one that found it. It's mine. I, I I was looking. I had seen this little show called Star Hustler. It used to be on PBS with Jack Horkheimer. I don't. Know, he's pretty. Um, and he was talking about looking for Antares in the constellation Scorpius. And I don't remember him mentioning at the time Saturn was right next to it, and they looked about the same color about the same brightness and I point the telescope at the first star I'm like okay that's Antares as described but well, what's this other thing <gasps> oh my god that's Saturn 
So I found it's mine. You know, that's funny because one of the things when I talk about being an explorer to kids today is they always think that they have to discover something new to humanity. And I always tell them, I'm like, no, you can be an um, explorer if it's new to you. Um, mm -hmm. Self-discovery is so powerful. And it sounds like you, you know, Saturn, anytime I discover a planet for myself, I'm like, oh, Jupiter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mars. It's mine. I just now claimed it. What, um, when we talk about exploration, what type of explorer are you? Do you want to go to the moon or Mars or would you want to do the ISS or uh, one of the low orbit flights? Um, or just stay well, here on Earth? Be, be, because I, I, I read up on some of the things like that, and I know that the trip to Mars is very, very long. Uh, I can't imagine anybody that I would be willing to be stuck inside of a small confined space with for the, that amount of time. And, and the moon, the moon would be okay. Um, I, I think, as far as realistic, I would love to go up in, in the low Earth orbit. Uh, j just the you know, it, it, it's it'd be quick. You'd probably be done with the whole thing in 24, 36 hours or so. Um, and because I live in Texas and there's a launch pad down in South Texas, I can do it from here. Um, you know, Elon, Elon Musk is, is getting, he's getting there. Yeah. And so I'm a little excited. I've never seen a rocket launch before. So I, you know, it's always in Florida, California. You guys get all the cool stuff. So I'm really, really pumped up about Texas getting uh, getting to do some things like that. Lower yeah. orbit, I'd see is I'd see it's attainable for one. I feel the same way. You know, um, I think that chasing the you know the astronaut dream, NASA astronaut dream, is over for me now. But I still have commercial space and at least, like you're yeah. saying, low Earth orbit um, in my hopes and dreams uh, while I'm still here. Mm -hmm. And I feel fortunate because I did get to see a shuttle launch and it was amazing. And so oh, I wish. Oh, <laughs> and I was trying to go see the, the launch coming up um, next week, but Florida's mm -hmm. kind of on a shutdown for that because another big historic launch. Um, if you going from space to food, if you could eat anything in low earth orbit, on your on your as you're going around the earth and having this amazing view what would you want to eat and why well I, I think in that sense because you're probably going to be a little uneasy with your stomach i'd want something that would be comforting so uh i'd like to try hope that, that a grilled cheese sandwich would would stay down <laughs> <laughs> so you like do you like um Grilled cheese sandwiches have come a long way. I yeah. mean, now there's all the specialty grilled cheese. Are you kind of a straight, um, keep it simple grilled cheese kind of guy? Or do you like to have the gourmet grilled cheese? You know, mom made Velveeta grilled cheese sandwiches growing up, and they, they were pretty good. But I don't think that would be the way to go anymore. And now that I know what's in Velveeta, yeah. <laughs> maybe, or maybe not quite so much. Uh, yeah, I'd say more, you know, real cheese, gourmet grilled cheese sandwich would be fantastic, but right. I'm not too picky uh, uh, of an eater. Uh, I, I would, uh, if it was offered, sure, I'll give it a try. Yeah, you know, um, I, well, I love cheese. Um, I'm trying not to eat as much as I used to eat. Right. Um, but I definitely, when it comes to grilled cheese, my big thing is now I'm gluten-free. So finding good gluten-free bread uh, okay. to make my grilled cheese. But I have one of those George Foreman grills. So I just kind of put my bread and my cheese in there. And That's a good idea. Oh, yeah. It works out really well. And so um, if you're going to have it go into space and low Earth orbit, and what I love about what you were saying about Mars is being confined in a small area with a group of people for a long time, you know, who, mm -hmm. who would you take with you? But going and circling the earth a couple of times, who would you want to go on that journey with you if you could bring anybody and why? Oh, who would I want to go with me? Yeah. You know, I honestly think in that sense, 
most of my friend, most of my, my, my friends, uh, are really not that into this. I, I kind of have, there, there, there's my friends and there's all the astronomy people. Mm -hmm. I honestly think in that sense, total strangers would be better because you would then have that initial experience to bond over the rest of your life. You know, I already have experiences with, with, with my friends. So this is be something completely new. It, it's kind of like with the ASAP program. You know, I didn't know any of those people before right. that. And so it was this adventure with total strangers. And now uh, all these other things have come up, all these other opportunities and things that have, uh, as a direct result of that, I wouldn't want it to be total strangers, honestly. You know, speaking of the, um, the, speaking of the Astronomy in Chile Educator Ambassador Program, I'm going to bring up a photo here and uh, just talk about for a minute what that was and what that experience meant to you. Life changing. It, it, it really was a, a life changing thing. There were a number of things about that trip. My my dad is a chemist. And when I he found out uh, that I was not going to be a scientist, I think he was slightly disappointed. Um, and that came up periodically. Anyway, when this opportunity came up to, to go to Chile, and I was telling him about it, he looked at me and he said, you've been planning this your whole life, haven't you? Because I knew, I knew a little geology. I knew that Chile was a good place to do astronomy uh, because of the, the, the climate, the altitude, the mountain peaks. I didn't know as much about the, 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 the politics there at, at the time. But uh, just, just in that sense, he was like, okay, I get it now. I, I really, really get it. And he liked talking to other people about, about, about that. Uh, and then meeting all these wonderful people, getting to, there were so many different ways to, to, to talk about it. A lot of things you get out of a trip isn't, the destination is important, but it's who you end up going with and then talking about it and having the shared experience afterwards. Um, but getting to go to all these uh, large-scale premier research facilities that most people only ever get to at most read about and um, and, and, and learn about from you know from a distance up to Alma up to the high side. Oh my goodness! You know, they say literally takes your breath away, as well as figuratively taking your breath away. I mean, that elevation is uncanny. And um, got a great photo of you there that I'm gonna. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, yeah, that one. Uh, there's another one. It, 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 you know, they give you your own little oxygen tank today. And I was watching everybody else. It. I was like, didn't feel the needle. To 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 look on to see was, and but I didn't really notice anything. But you know, they say at high altitude, you, you don't, you have to be careful. So you you don't know if you're <laughs> acting goofy or whatever. I think we were all just elated uh, to 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 get to go up and. It makes you hungry to go back. It, watching all the other groups that have gone up before, I have a hard time watching it because I get a little jealous. I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> how can I try to find a way? How can I go back? How can I go back to San Pedro? How can I go back to 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 to, to, to La Serena? Um, and still trying to find a way to do it. And now it's going to be even harder to do. But right. Uh, keep working at it now i'll get there eventually i know i i feel fortunate i yeah i so those of you guys that are listening a couple of things first of all if you're listening and you leave us a comment in the chat i'm giving away a uh recipe postcard so this one in honor of you being in texas we have texas guacamole 
And so you can win this postcard by just leaving a comment in our chat here. Um, but Astronomy and Chile Education, Education Ambassador Program, you went the year before me. Mm -hmm. and and then I got lucky and got selected and went the following year but then what's great about the program is they bring us together um, at different locations and we finally got to meet yes and, which was which I think is part of why I love that program so much is that you get to interact with previous or future cohorts it doesn't end you, you you're, you're in and as Tim says once you're in you're in <laughs> and and so uh, so that was actually the, the second uh, reunion of sorts. We got back together in, in Green Bank that fall. It was a smaller group of us. We got together in Green Bank. That was fun. And um, and then there there at Kit Peak, I got to meet you. Got to meet David, um, David Lockett, and then. Uh, I don't know what it is about going to places like that and suddenly weird weather phenomena. We had a, 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 a blizzard. blizzard we did. I'm from South Texas. That doesn't happen. So I was not prepared for a high altitude. Yes. Whiteout conditions. Uh, -uh. <laughs> I know that was pretty crazy. Yes, uh, it was. Then, um, the VLA was this past year and uh, mm -hmm. I'm really hoping we end up going to like, um, uh, Arecibo. I'm like, that's the one. <laughs> I'm like, well, let's go to Puerto Rico. So going back to food, and I know you've got the girls, three girls. Um, do you like to cook? Are you a baker? Do you, are you do takeout, grilling? What do you guys do at home for food? I, I, I like to cook. I, I'm a baker, but I, I'm, my, you know, you have kids, they get to be picky. So I learned early, early on. Don't try to please them. So I'm going to bake what I like to eat. And if you want some, you're more than welcome to it. If you don't want to eat it, well, fine. It's more for me. So I don't bake for others. So if you see me cooking something, it's something that I already know. I already know I like to eat. Uh, so I, I'm not a fan of nuts in, in most things. And so I when I bake cookies, and I really don't like baking cookies, but if I bake them, it, it's there, there are no pecans in it. The Texas pecans got to be every, in everything. Ruin a perfectly good cookie by putting nuts in it. Same okay, with the, uh, <laughs> what about chocolate in a cookie? Oh, chocolate chip, absolutely. That, that, that's the you know, number one answer. Uh, but I, I like to bake, uh, I have a, a pound cake recipe that my mom made. We, we had chickens growing up, so we had an endless supply of eggs. And this recipe has nine eggs in it oh my goodness if you're wow. on it it'll kill it <laughs> we want to talk about how much sugar and, 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 and a couple other ingredients that are in it if you're on a diet just forget about it but i Ooh. could eat that pound cake for breakfast lunch and dinner for about two days and then i'm done with it for a while but um, amazing though oh, i might have to have you enter it i have a uh, meals for earth recipe contest right now and so I might have to send you the link so you can submit that recipe because that sounds it awesome. Is, it is five ingredients. I, I saw that. It, 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 I think it would qualify. The um, And so do your girls love space the way you do? A little bit. I, I think they – I had hoped that one of them would just take off and do with it on their own. But, you know, you got to let kids find their own things. They – there was a couple of them. My older one, my oldest one, she was interested in it for a little while. Again, it was I think it was because dad wanted to go do it. You want to spend time with dad? Let's go do this. So I took, for example, I took Leslie with me one time to, to uh, LPSC, um, and and, and uh, we. I remember she talked with somebody who was uh, who uh, um, I forget what her name was, but she had worked on the Sophia program, and so I was trying to let you know, hey. You know, there are other, you know, people besides me in, in, into this sort of thing. And then the other two girls, sometimes I said, Daddy, can I go to the planetarium? So I'm teaching Charlotte how to, uh, occasionally I'm teaching, letting her, you know, look at the planetarium console and the stuff. I haven't quite let her, like, touch the buttons on that. 
But I have let her use it, taught her how to use the observatory stuff, the big telescope. Um, and then she knows how to use the, the, the eight inch Dobsonians. Sometimes when I, I know I have Boy Scouts or Cub Scouts, I say, all right, kid, um, I'll give her a telescope. You're in charge. She's like, what? I'm like, you're in charge. I look at the boys, the other kids are like, she's in charge. If she says, don't touch it, don't touch it. Oh, that's so great. But, now, and she's uh, 12 or 13, right? She's 13. She's 13. Well, that's a great age to really start um, giving, getting into uh, that kind of stuff. I remember that's about the age I was when I really started um, taking it a little more serious, you know, science and things like that and telescopes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, yeah. your oldest daughter is going to, she's going off to um, Sam Houston also. Sam Houston, that, that, that's here in, in Huntsville. So she's not, she's not really going that far. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's, you know, five miles most from the house. <laughs> and, and so, um, well, maybe she'll be dropping in to, to come visit you at the uh, observatory and planetarium. At the planetarium, uh, we kind of kind of joked about this. Yeah, I may actually come to one of your planetarium shows. And, <laughs> okay, are you are you patronizing me? Are you just being funny? Or well, maybe, but I don't see her taking the astronomy class. She kind of, you know, told her, looked at her, said, you're more than welcome to take it. I'm not going to say no. Said, yeah, I know, no, no. So okay, let's Has see. Has she declared a major yet? Uh, currently, she wants to do graphics design. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. very good area. So she, she was the uh, has, has been the editor of, of the school, the, the chief editor of, of the school yearbook. So that's the other thing she had to put that together from at home, and so had to, had to re-edit. You know, okay, three months worth of school gone. So. Okay, that means this page can't be there. This page can't be there. How are we gonna fill in the gap? And and so she's had to kind of juggle those things. And so I've been telling her, okay, when you start filling out uh, job applications and and questionnaires, think about go back and think about what your experience was with that. Rely on that. On that, and that's a major curveball. Most graduating seniors until this year have never had to do that before right. so you have a unique experience you know, you know um, one of the people that i've interviewed uh aaron bonilla on mm -hmm. space snack she's a good friend of mine she her degrees are in graphic um arts mm -hmm. and but she is now a big space person because she ended up she had a graphic arts um working in the fashion industry and then okay then ended up being a graphic artist at NASA headquarters. And oh, then wow. that experience of being a graphic artist at NASA made her want to go back to school to get her master's in adventure education, a human space flight training. And now she wants to train astronauts. So your daughter may come back to space. You know, that, that was one of the things about the trip to Chile. You go to all these world-class observatories big observe biggest telescopes in the world and you know in the back of my head i'm thinking okay i'm going to meet some astronomers and and, and i did you, you meet you met a few but it wasn't just the astronomers you met all the support staff that go along with that and you meet you know like at alma you know medical doctors their their degree yeah. you know they're, they're they're medical doctors but they're helping keep an astronomical research facility functioning because of the high altitude. And so, and then you have the engineers and the plumbers and the electricians and, and all the other uh, um, jobs that are involved that when they set out at the beginning of their career, never maybe ever thought of working at an observatory. Exactly. So there's always, you know, I, I tell the, students that are taking our, our intro to astronomy class the incoming front you know, that that science class i realize all of you are majoring in something completely different nothing to do with science but if you're interested in this there is a way to reconnect that interest to your 
degree to your career that it may not be obvious at first, but you never know. So don't just give up because I'm, you know, an art major. Uh, the, the first projects that I worked on with, uh, with the Citizen Sky Project in, in 2009, that was uh, with the uh, American Association of Variable Star Observers. And they had a group of us meet up in Chicago. They had teachers, uh, professional astronomers, and then artists to work together to do to to do this to do this project. And it was really cool. That was one of the first times I thought, okay, you know, not again, not really a scientist, but here I am working on on this uh, genuine science project. It was it, it's really neat. Well, that's, you know, and you bring up a good point, and that, I think that's one of the things that was really fun and eye-opening about being a, an astronomy and Chile educator ambassador, ambassador, <laughs> and is that we got to see all the village it takes to yes, run one of does. these um, amazing observatories. And as a community college professor, you know, I have non-science majors and the same thing where I'm telling them, you don't know, you know, I've had actual graphic artists convert to wanting to become planetary scientists from taking my class just mm. because they had so much fun laying out the science communication part and, right. um, and needing the graphic artists to be able to communicate the science and to create the pamphlets and create the posters and all of that media that goes out. Yeah, there's there's a lot of thought and, and you need a, a a variety of people to be able to translate that in, in the right way you know, a lot of scientists aren't always the best communicators right and so you know, it, it it really does take you know a, a different way of looking at things and you, you need someone who has enough of a science background to grasp the the the, the critical science concepts, but at the same time to be able to communicate that out to um, people who aren't science majors, who aren't scientists that still have an interest in it and want to understand why is this happening? Why are we spending money here? Why are we doing this there? Why can't we just go to Mars like that? Well, <laughs> yeah. it takes six months to get there. Oh, <laughs> okay. That I understand. <laughs> so I've got uh, uh, two more questions for you. One, do you have a drink of choice that you like to have when you're eating a grilled cheese sandwich or a cookie? Coffee. Coffee. <laughs> coffee. Uh, there, there are other beverages, of course, but if, if you're going to offer me coffee, uh, I'll take it. Now, are you a straight black or are you uh, a yes. gourmet coffee? Oh, well, well, straight black, good gourmet coffee you know and no, no cream no you know, maybe a little bit of sugar depending on how how it's been done uh actually because of the well not because of the during the virus first couple of days we had a uh we had a blackout here we had a lot of hailstorms and stuff come through and and uh i had to learn how to learn how to use my french press at, at the time i was like i was jonesing for coffee and i was almost ready to make it and then the lights went out i thought hmm Okay, <sighs> ah, that French press. I'd never used it before, so like, yeah, okay, coffee. Okay, are you still <laughs> using your French press? Have you gotten to the routine of that? <laughs> I, I, I haven't. You know, I, I'm also I've gotten a little bit lazy, so so no, but but I I, I need to practice with it. No, are you a snacker? When everybody's asleep. <laughs> You're a late night snacker. I'm a late night snacker. Go to sleep. Daddy needs to eat something. <laughs> what do you like to snack on late night? Cookies. Cookies. And your cookies. favorite type of cookie? Okay. Sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes uh, you know, I'm a sandwich guy. Uh, favorite cookie? Chocolate chip or peanut butter cookies? Oh, see, you combine both of those together, and that's my favorite. Yeah. Peanut butter, chocolate chip. Oh, okay. <laughs> just to, to die for. Um, and so, Michael, it, we're at the end. And so I want to thank you for coming on Space Snacks. And how can people 
follow you or learn more about the observatory? Okay, so I'd say that the, the best way on, on Facebook that I have a planetarium page that's called SHSC Planetarium. And uh, there are other ways. We have an amateur astronomy club called Hunsel, uh, the Hunsel Amateur Astronomy Society. Uh, we've got that on Facebook. But most people, if you really want to know what's going on, the, the Planetarium Facebook page would be the best way. I do have a Twitter account at SHSU Observatory, but uh, I don't post as much there as, as I do the Facebook page. Uh, well, hopefully you will be up and running again soon um, for the oh. summer program. Yes, I hope so too. <laughs> and thanks again. We didn't get any comments this time, but if you watch this video and you leave a comment, I'll check back and you can get the first person to leave a comment. I will send the Texas guacamole recipe card too. So thank you again, Mike. Thanks. It's been so great chatting with you. It's great chatting with you. I have one question, those of you who are watching. So I have this shirt from the physics department, and I am not a scientist. I know that this one means hydrogen atom, but I have no idea what these other formulas mean. If you guys can help me maybe figure out what this is, I don't really have a clue. Oh, very <laughs> but anyway, cool. just curious. Yeah. So leave it, leave the answer in the chat um, for on this Facebook page. And thanks again, Mike, for tuning in, for joining me. And those of you that are going to be listening to this, thanks for tuning in. Bye, everybody. Bye. Hmm.